death. We won't spare anyone. Everyone's brought to life and will eventually die. Well, that's what we heard. But for these animals, death is something that's a bit overrated. Call them zombies if you like. But these animals surely defy everything that we ever thought was impossible. Today, I bring you a few animals that actually have more than one life up their sleeves. Welcome to Animals Wow TV. Let's get started. Cockroaches are known for their perseverance. They can live for two weeks without their heads if they don't have them. But how do these bugs manage to avoid being decapitated? First and foremost, unlike humans, cockroaches do not bleed profusely when their heads are severed. They have an open circulatory system, which means they have low to no blood pressure. Thus, if their heads fall off, the wound will clot and reveal itself spontaneously. Although a headless cockroach will ultimately die of malnutrition, it'll take weeks for them to do so. Second, cockroaches don't require their heads to breathe since they do it through spiracles, which are small pores on their bodies. If they weren't scary enough before, this makes it worse, if I'm being honest. Snakes, with their heads sliced off, can still kill you. The snake's fangs and lethal poison sacs can still bite you and deliver fatal venom, even if the rest of its body is no longer attached. After having his head hacked off, this one still had the energy to bite his own body. The snake contains heat-sensitive pits on either side of its face that it uses to sense dangers, and these pits may now detect a menacing presence for hours after death. This implies that the snake's head will continue to protect itself and may attack you if you approach it or pick it up, believing it's dead. After being sliced up, an octopus continues to move. The reason its arms maintain mobility even after being hacked off is pretty remarkable. It's due to its unique central nerve system. Two out of every three nerve cells of an octopus may be located in its tentacles. These limbs can continue to respond to stimuli even after they are no longer attached to the main brain. In fact, they can continue to do so even after the octopus has died. These motions can continue for up to a week after the octopus has passed away. Unfortunately, this one's gonna be fried up and placed on meal plates. There's a reason they're on this list. Even if a bee is dead, it can still sting you. Not in the manner you would assume. Clearly, dead bees can't go flying about and aggressively strike you. The point is, even if the bee is long dead, their sting, and more critically, the venom delivery mechanism will still operate. When a bee stings, the sting detaches from the bee's body and becomes implanted in the skin of the victim. Attached to this is a little organ that holds the bee's venom, as well as a tiny muscle that pumps it out. Because the bee's activities are governed by automatic impulses rather than the brain, picking up a dead bee is dangerous. Salamanders have traditionally been associated with immortality and long life. Salamanders have an astonishing capacity to restore any body part that's been cut off. These regrown components perform as well as or better than the original ones in some circumstances. This is mostly due to a specific protein present in salamanders that aids cell multiplication. Humans have this protein as well, albeit in lesser amounts. If the tops of certain species' heads are cut off, they can regenerate those as well. Looks to me that these guys are putting some of our favorite DC and Marvel superheroes to shame. The next item on this list is something that practically all of us have witnessed in our everyday lives. All disease transmission, hand rubbing, and nature's billion-eyed creatures, the flies. Flies have the ability to tolerate cold conditions and enter a state of suspended animation. You may freeze them for days and then thaw them out to get them back to normal. Female flies may even live for several days after they've been decapitated, taking on an upright attitude similar to that of a regular fly and performing sophisticated behaviors such as preening and flying. I'm gonna test it and see for myself if it's true or not, and I'll report back to you guys on my findings. Fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals all have pacemaker cells in their hearts that take over when the brainstem signals aren't getting through. It guarantees that the heart continues to work for a time, even if the brain doesn't. The turtle, on the other hand, took it to a whole new level, and this is because their heart is cut off from the oxygen and nutrients that are normally delivered by the blood. Because these creatures may live for a very long period, 
In the case of the loggerhead musk turtle, up to 5,000 hours. They can stay alive for that long by absorbing oxygen from the water through their skin, pharynx, and butt end. In addition to their body's incredible ability to produce energy without oxygen, their hearts have their own fuel supply, which they will not exhaust until the very last drop has been used. Starfish are known for their astonishing capacity to regenerate or regrow appendages and, in rare cases, whole bodies in addition to their distinctive morphology. While most species require the central body to regrow limbs, a few tropical species may regenerate a whole new starfish from a section of a severed limb. Starfish regeneration is a three-phase process that can take up to a year or more depending on the species. Though starfish may regenerate limbs that have been eaten or destroyed by predators, they can also autonomize and regenerate limbs to elude predators and procreate. Okay, this might get a little gruesome, so you might want to put your snacks away for this one. Frogs can still move around, even when their brains are dead, according to new research. If you keep the frog's head but remove its brain, the resulting headed but brainless frog acts quite similarly to a frog with all of its green matter intact. If you pinch its feet, it'll hop away. If you put it in water, it'll swim to the side and climb out, and most amazingly, if you stroke its back, it'll croak intently. Yes, chickens with their heads cut off can run around and there's a very simple explanation for this. Human mistake is to blame. This particular blunder is a butcher's error. The chicken's central nervous system is quite different from ours in that several basic biological processes are regulated by sections of the brainstem rather than the brain itself. So most of the time, when the butcher slices the chicken's head too high, just the forebrain of the bird falls off with the head, leaving the brainstem and cerebellum intact. This kind of reminds me of the zombies that we used to fight against in the Call of Duty series. Man, I miss the old days. All right, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Do smash that like button if this video was to your liking. Comment down below which one of these you think was the creepiest and the ones you were not expecting to learn about. Subscribe to our channel if this is the sort of video that you like to watch and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and take care.